and welcome to today's video and in today's video we're going to be preparing and painting this steering wheel uh, which is quite a rare steering wheel it is from a 2000 Nissan Micra Sport Plus and the reason why it's rare is it's leather wrapped now it's quite unusual to find a Micra steering wheel that is wrapped in leather I think certainly on the K11 coil pack models, only the SE Plus and the Sport Plus had um, a leather wrapped steering wheel. The rest of the models had plastic steering wheels. On the previous face, on the previous models, I think certain models had uh, leather wrapped steering wheels. I think it may have even been an option. So to find one is quite a good find actually, and I'm quite excited to uh, obviously get started with it. So I'm not going to be keeping it uh, the red colour, but to suit the interior of my car, I'm going for this nice sort of bottle green colour, which I think will look quite good. And unlike the time I did the XJ40 Jaguar Sport steering wheel from the Jag, I'm going to be applying some of this gloss brilliant clear coat. Uh, which is clear sealer, which should actually sort of seal this in so that we don't get uh, sort of wear marks like we've got on here. As you can see, it is quite sort of badly worn. Now, for masking, I've masked the whole underside with newspaper, and in this case, sellotape, because I couldn't find my um, masking tape, which is a bit annoying because I bought a load of new stuff recently. And I've also popped out these plastic side covers which give you access to the Torx bolt, uh, the safety Torx bolts uh, for the airbag. A little bit about airbags if you are going scrapyard hunting. Now, what I found when I was um, removing steering wheels, I removed a steering wheel from a 2003 Tempest simply because it, had, it was blue or light blue, which I thought would go quite well with the interior of the Micra. Um, a little further on in the yard I found the, uh, the Sport Plus and I took the steering wheel from the Sport Plus so I've actually got both steering wheels. I've got the Tempest steering wheel but I've also got the steering wheel from the Sport Plus which is the one I'm preparing here. Now the airbags although visually similar have got different connectors so the Sport Plus was a 2000 uh, model year car uh, it was actually one of the first coil pack models um, that came out. So Nissan had two sets of uh, model ranges at the time. So they had what they called Contemporary, which was Contemporary Trim Level, which was um, what they would sort of class as fashionable. So in, for that particular year, late part of 2000, it was the Sport and Sport Plus. They also had what was called the traditional trim level. So that was the S, the SE, which I have, and the SE Plus. Now, the Sport Plus was only available with the CG, CGA 3DE engine. So that was the 1348cc unit. Uh, the Sport was only available with the one litre. And the Sport had a similar interior to the Sport Plus, so it was that sort of red theme. But it didn't have, uh, I don't think it had electric mirrors or um, front fog lights. In fact, uh, I don't think, uh, well, this particular model I took the steering wheel off didn't have um, electric mirrors either, which I was a bit surprised at because I thought that was one of the things that the Sport Plus actually had over um, the base level Sport in the other models. Back to the steering wheels though, the airbag connector is quite different on the 2000 cars from the 2003 cars. So on the 2000 cars there's like a little separate uh, connector that then plugs into the back of the airbag and on the 2003 cars that connector just, there's no additional connector, there's just literally a cable that goes into the back of the airbag. I didn't examine them close enough but I think and I will be able to confirm this in the next video when I take the airbag off of um, my car to replace the steering wheel. I think uh, if you're going to in interchange, if interchange is indeed possible, you have to keep the um, 
the smaller connector, the secondary connector, if you're replacing a later airbag onto an earlier car. Now, I will double check because I'm not even certain that uh, you can swap an earlier airbag with um, a later car and vice versa. So I would try, if you have to find an airbag replacement, going for an airbag from the year of um, production that your car is in. So if you've got a 2000 car, find an airbag from a model from the year 2000. Now the other thing about airbags is the colours. So on my one, the finish of the airbag is a light grey, and that was the same on all of the traditional trim level models. On Sport, Sport and Sport Plus, and indeed uh, the other contemporary models that uh, Nissan had, so the Tempest, Twister, uh, and the other ones that they had out sort of in subsequent years, the finish of the airbag is black. So it's this sort of colour here. Now, what I'm doing is because I want to keep the back of the steering wheel black, I'm um, only painting the rim of the steering wheel itself. So I'm going to have a slightly mismatched black back or dark grey back and light grey uh, airbag, but that doesn't bother me too much because it's the rest of the steering wheel is sort of what matters and you can't really see the back of the steering wheel uh, when you're um, looking at the front of the steering wheel, so to speak. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using some 1500 grade wet and dry using it in a wet condition and it's doing quite a good job of actually removing the dye from the steering wheel itself and it's also giving the surface to key up against which I'll be able to spray onto with the primer very shortly. I don't want to go too deep because I don't want to rub off the leather or anything like that or rub through the leather so that's why I'm just using a very lightly abrasive paper uh, in order just to key off the surface. You've got to be a bit careful because it does tend to dry and stick to the newspaper. So what I'm going to do now is just go and get something to wipe that down. So I'm just going to wash off the, uh, the wet and dry, get rid of the dye on that. And that can be left there to dry off and refresh. So that can be used later if I want to. Right, so let's go and get something to dry that off. So we've got something to dry this off, it's actually doing quite a good job of drying on its own, but um, this will sort of remove any of the uh, additional bits of paint that have come off. Now it won't be an impossible task if I wanted to, to actually return this back to its original sporty red colour so that uh, it could sort of live on another life in a Sport Plus. Or indeed an inspiration, the uh, the orangey uh, seat trim, orange and red seat trim, which is sort of quite reminiscent of the, uh, the Sport Plus, funnily enough. But in this instance, it's going to go green, figuratively, not literally. Actually, literally it is rather, yes. Literally, not figuratively, rather. And uh, it will sort of suit the interior of my car. So that's actually given that a nice finish to actually... Um, key onto. So we want to put these little covers out of the way. So you can actually see that they are marked right and left. So obviously left, left hand side of the steering wheel, right, right hand side of the steering wheel. And it's surprisingly easy to actually remove the airbag. So you prise off those two covers and you've got what they're called, I think they're called safety torques. So they've got like a, a standard torques um, centre but they've got little pin sticking out, so you need the little bits that have got the little hole in the centre. Slot into there and undo it and undo that one, and then it's a 19mm bolt in the centre which obviously comes off and then you can wiggle the steering wheel free to pull it off. Um, I would recommend uh, possibly investing in a steering wheel puller, because you never know if the steering wheel's just sort of got to basically pop off and hit you in the face. I was quite lucky, but it is probably a good idea to invest in something, uh, a steering wheel puller anyway. It's just a little bit safer. So make sure that the room is well ventilated. Again, I've done the standard approach of heating the cans first in the water. And the room I'm painting in 
is at 31.4 degrees Celsius with relative humidity of 36%, so it's quite dry and warm in here. Make sure that it's well ventilated. Standard sort of approach when you are going to be spraying anything with uh, solvent based sprays like this with uh, a very high volatile organic compound count, which is good. Anyway, let's get this shaken up. And let's start spraying. So I'm going to stand up to do this. Stand away from it and do the standard spray release method. Not dwelling too much on any particular area. Just want to get a even coverage across the whole of the surface of the wheel. is approach it at a slight angle. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but I'm approaching it at this sort of angle here and spraying like so onto the edge of the steering wheel. And I'm just going to go round and do that for the rest of the steering wheel edge like so. This basically minimises the need to actually have to turn this over. Just notice there's a little uh, bit there. There we go, that'll cover up with subsequent coats. Notice there was a bit of dust on there. Ideally, you want to wait for it to dry and then use a bit of wet and dry to remove it. Now, you will find if you are spraying it in a very warm, dry room, but it will start to flash off quite quickly, which is quite good. So I'm just going to place this back into the warm pond and let it dry. So we left it drying for a bit, uh, left it for approximately 15 minutes, which means that it's pretty much hand dry or touch dry. So what I'm going to do so I need to get to this other side. Now I'm not going to rest it on the, um, the surface of the table itself. I'm going to hold it away from my arm and try and spray it like so. It does mean I do will catch my hand whilst spraying. But I'm not going to affect the actual finish because I'm just able to, of the other side that is, so I'm just able to work it around like so. Now this is where your baby wipes will come in handy because you can use those to wipe your arm off. Ideally, wear gloves, which I'm not doing, 
but I ideally wear gloves, which will just help protect your arm and hands a bit from the paint. Once that's done, you should have a nice covering. So I'm just going to carefully, very carefully, making sure that you don't touch the steering wheel onto the surface rest it back down and that has given you not only good coverage on my arm there but also coverage of the underside of the wheel as well so we're just going to leave that to dry and I'm going to clean my hand off so if you find that you've mucked up uh, part of the, um, the priming like I have here, don't be afraid to let it dry and just get a bit of wet and dry onto it, so in this case wet, 1500 grade, and just gently rub the primer back. Now the other thing, this section's got perforated uh, hand grips on it, so what you might want to try to do, like I'm doing here, is just gently rub down this entire section once it is dry so that you bring back some of those perforations. So the mistake I've made is I've laid on, certainly in this section, I've laid on the primer a little bit too thick. And the same on this side. But if I gently rub it back with a little bit of wet and dry, keeping it slightly wet, does actually bring back some of those perforations so that when you put on the next coat the perforations are hopefully going to be open enough to receive and let the paint absorb into them. What I'm also doing is just gently smoothing off this whole area so that I can reapply some of the primer what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit and just use the hairdryer to dry it off, putting the hairdryer on medium heat. And also, a relatively low speed, because one thing I noticed, which is why I had a bit of an issue in this particular area, is I had the hairdryer on too high a temperature and too high a speed. And what that ended up doing was actually bubbling the, um, the primer. Well, it's always best to try and let it dry naturally, but if you do want to rush it, you just need to be mindful of how you do it. And these things are always a learning curve, that's why you always want to have a good bit of uh, wet and dry on standby, just to rub it all back again, just in case you need to. So there's always going to be, if you're not a professional, which I'm far from, um, there's always going to be little areas that you just need to go over just to sort of get it to an acceptable level. I'm actually going to go down to some 800 grade here. So I'm going to wet that up and I'm just going to gently rub this so that it comes back to a more flush surface. Which it seems to be doing quite well actually. You can actually see it's going back to the original red coat underneath. But all of the uh, the ridges that were there are slowly disappearing and moulding into the rest of the, the wheel itself. In fact, I just made another little mistake, just tidy that up there. So even though this is dry, it's still a little bit tacky in places. So obviously just Rubbing that down gently there and here. And there just gives us a little bit of a better surface to go on to subsequently. So if we can now go back to 1500 grade, we can smooth this down even further. So that we now go back to a nice smooth finish which we appear to have and same on there as well 
hang in there, up on the side. And we're just going to dry off on a low speed, medium temperature. I want to dry off that water. So ideally, I don't want to mop it dry or wipe it dry. So let's try and dry it for evaporation, albeit in this case slightly accelerated evaporation. That's coming up nicely. So don't concentrate on one area. So that's the fault I made, was I concentrated on one particular area and I ended up bubbling the, um, the primer, which you don't really want to do. Because you have to go through this grip and roll of uh, rubbing it back and starting again to a certain extent. The primer is also hydroscopic, so it means it absorbs water. So if you're doing this on a car, I always think it's a good idea to dry the car thoroughly between coats so that you don't get any water trapped between the layers is what will happen is that will cause eventually that will cause micro blistering. There are other reasons why micro blistering can occur but trap water bubbles I believe is one of those causes. So get the still warm can and reapply areas of primer and you can see now that that's actually a lot better than it was. I'm leaving this side which I've rubbed down slightly as that's just given me a nice finish on the primer and expose some of those perforations. What should happen naturally as it dries with luck is those perforations should gently absorb uh, the top coat and the paint and hopefully sort of open up naturally. What I discovered with um, the dashboard when I did the dashboard was the ripply under under sort of uh, the ripply coating on the dash has actually come up really nicely through the paint as the paint has dried and dried over that sort of ripple coat. So we're going to go on for a medium fan speed, medium temperature, and we're just going to dry that area out. There are some imperfections in the steering wheel, some actual cuts and leather, which you can see there and there. So I'm not going to be too upset if they appear in the final product. Because it is a second hand part, you can't expect perfection, especially when it's coming from a scrap vehicle. So just gently go around like so. I should feel that the temperature coming out of there is not boiling by any means. It's just warm, which is what you want. Right, we're just going to leave this to dry for a bit. So after leaving that for a bit, we're now ready to apply the top coat. Uh, this top coat is green. It doesn't seem to have any sort of particularly flashy name. It's just sort of that sort of green. Uh, There's also a satin finish as well, so it should have a natural shine out of the bottle. Now this has been warming in the, uh, the tub, and I've shaken it for about sort of two to three minutes or so. So it has a 40 to 60 minute touch dry delay. So you have to leave the steering wheel as I've been doing, sort of 40 to 60 minutes between coats. So let's get started, obviously, not very close like that, but good distance away. I'd sort of tend to go by the six to 10 inch rule. Oh, that's actually a mask. That's a nice color. Oh, that's very nice, yeah. I'm rather happy with that. Let's 
exactly the sort of colour I wanted, funnily enough. So what I've found is if I do sort of quick releases like this, it allows me to coat a very specific area. But do it in such a way that you get really good coverage straight off the bat. Actually helps if you I'm not ambidextrous, but it does help if you can use your left hand to do it as well. It is fairly uh, fairly sort of not tiring. It just strains your hands slightly. And you sort of constantly press and release the trigger. I've noticed actually the better quality of the aerosol. The better quality of the finish you'll tend to get. So I'm personally, although I don't not have any experience of this, so I'm not really in a good position to be able to um, comment, but I would sort of try to buy from a reputable source and not sort of try to do it cheaply. So this one I'm using is actually from Plasticoat and Plasticoat do have um, sort of a pretty good reputation when it comes to um, sort of paint and other things like that and so particularly when uh, this is a multi-surface paint so sort of particularly when you're spraying onto non-conventional surfaces, in this case leather, and it was a plastic coat that I used to do the XJ40 steering wheel, the Jaguar Sport wheel that I've got in my XJ40, and that was done about a year ago now, and it's still in excellent condition, so I can sort of vouch for these, they are sort of pretty good. What I'm going to do now is to leave this for about an hour or so to dry, and hopefully that should be enough of a coat on the top side. What I'll need to do is do the same thing, grabbing the wheel, flipping it over, and just giving that under side, under portion of the wheel, a bit of a coat as well with this. So in the meantime, I'll pop it back into the warm water, and you may want to top up the warm water periodically. And we shall be back to finish it off shortly. So the steering wheel has been sat for some time, actually drying, and I've got to say the end result is not too bad. It's uh, covered on both sides, and as I expected would happen, you can actually see some of those perforations are beginning to come back as the paint dries and sinks into those perforations, which is quite handy. So the actual um, nice sort of perforated effect that you've got on the leather on the parts uh, that you'll see your hands are going to hold is still there so that's actually sort of quite a nice thing to have back so what we're going to do now is we're going to apply some of this gloss clear sealer which should uh, seal in the top coat and also sort of give a really nice shiny finish which will look uh, rather pleasant in my view so let's get this shaken up first and let's get this applied so i've given that a shake for a couple of minutes and now we're going to apply and see how we come up This is more just to seal uh, the actual colour and it does seem to kill off a small amount of the shine that you actually had from that satin finish but what's more important to me is the colour not wearing off on one's hands when you actually sort of come to use the steering wheel in the car. I'm also hoping this stuff isn't too slippery either. Yeah, we shall soon see. So I'm just going to give it a liberal coating all over. So it really goes to town with it. So it does actually, as you apply it, just seem to start shining up again, which is quite nice. Looks good. Obviously, 
do if you were doing this in the original colour, which is sort of like an orangey red, uh, the process is exactly the same. And I think you can get that sort of orangey red colour in the vinyl coat line of products. There we go. So we'll just leave that to dry and we'll come back to it later and see how it looks. And the final thing you want to do is to apply some of your gloss coat to the underside. So I've just done that by just grabbing the centre of the wheel, upending it and just spraying the other side. And all you want to do now is just leave it to dry. So generally I'm quite pleased with the finish. It's looking pretty good. And uh, what I'm hoping will happen is that once it dries, all of the paint will just sink naturally into the perforations on the uh, sort of these parts of the steering wheel. But I'm pretty pleased with the colour. Uh, the colour is actually looks a bit different than what it did in the, when it, on the lid. It's actually come out a little bit different. It's actually come out better than I was hoping. So yeah, that is pretty much all that we need to do. In the next video, we're going to be covering removing the steering wheel and refitting this new steering wheel. Now, one of the first things you want to do before touching a car with an airbag or airbags is to disconnect the battery and to leave it for a good few hours or so. Um, if you can, if you don't have to use the car overnight, before you go to bed, disconnect the battery. Make sure the battery terminals are out of the way. Uh, go to bed and then when you come back the next morning the airbag is going to be completely discharged. They tend to say about an hour is fine if you leave the battery disconnected for an hour then the airbag itself should discharge or have discharged in that time. Um, it's unlikely that it would go off when you're removing it but there is that sort of minute possibility that when you're removing the multi-plug and if you create a spark that the airbag would be triggered enough to go off at that point. I believe they require a 12 volt um, bolt or jolt in other words uh, in order to sort of trigger the explosive within the airbag but it's, it's better safe than sorry for these things because effectively you are dealing with an explosive device which has quite a lot of explosive force and uh, touch wood I've never actually had an airbag go off in my face but uh, they're, uh, you know, having seen sort of airbags go off on YouTube where people have stupidly sat on top of the airbag, it's not fun. <laughs> it doesn't look particularly uh, wonderful. Now, incidentally, this is the area where I had a little bit of trouble earlier, and this just really sort of proves if you spend a bit of time rubbing the surface back, you can get uh, a very reasonable finish when you go back to uh, spray it again. Anyway, hopefully you would have found this video useful. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. And don't forget that the next video is actually fitting the steering wheel. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.